Cheung Myung was able to take the map to the sword graveyard where the sword interceptor lies from Jin Haiyan, which made him happy. He realized that he needed to crack the map to get to the cemetery. But when he looks at the map, he starts to question the great deed of the medicine immortal. While looking at the map, he said, but who am I? I was once called the strongest in the Mount Hua sect. This is nothing to me. So he tried to look at the map and tried to understand what was written on it. But for only a minute, he surrendered and smashed down the map on the ground because he didn't understand anything from it. He was thinking so deeply and said, I don't think it is a map of a cemetery. I have never been a genius at solving puzzles and ciphers. I am only the best at beating people. If I can't solve it, I will leave it to my senior disciples. Cheong Myung picks up the map again. Since Mu Jin was defeated by him and he was able to take the map, Cheong Myung knows that many followers will come. It is impossible for him to defeat all of them no matter how he tries. He thinks that only three days are remaining until the other disciples come, so he needs to find the grave as soon as possible. If he could find it, he believed that the former glory of Mount Hua sect would return. But for Cheong Myung, who was hungry from using his energy beating down the Wudang, his stomach is his main priority, so he jumps to go back to the affiliated sect. On the other hand, Yun Yun told his senior, he must have tracked down the Wudang sect disciples, so if we follow that path they took, we will definitely find him. But Bekshin was so depressed from the mess of Cheong Myung that he said, if we go after him, can we really stop him? What did I do in my previous life to be afflicted with the company of that despicable person? Hearing that made Young Yung's body shiver because what his senior said was true. If that bastard acts and does what he is doing no one can stop him. Jo Jiel suddenly enters the conversation and says, but I think he hasn't made a huge mess. Hearing that made his seniors to look at him and become more depressed. That is why Jo Jiel told his senior that although Cheong Myung always created chaos, it was a mess that could have been dealt with. Jo Jiel added, there has always been a logical reason behind Cheong Myung causing chaos. Whenever he created a mess, it was a mess that he is fixed on. But Bekshin could only take a sigh because he realized the suffering they went through to cover up his actions. Jo Jiel looks at his senior sister Yu Isil. He can't believe that she is just drinking tea in a dire situation. He thinks his senior sister is a weird person. Yu Isil notices something and told everyone that Cheong Myung is coming. Then Cheong Myung appeared and the wall was completely broken from the impact of his sudden appearance. Cheong Myung told everyone that it looks like he missed the right landing. Yun Yung shouted at him, is it difficult for you to enter through the door? Cheong Myung told everyone to gather but they are already gathered while waiting for him. He put down the map on the table and told his seniors that they needed to decipher the map. Bekshin was sweating and confused about what kind of map is that. So he asks, who did you defeat to steal this mysterious map? Cheong Myung told him, didn't I tell you? He is called the flowing sword Mu Jin. Hearing that made Bekshin more depressed because this bastard now steals a map from the three swords of Wudang. Because of that, Bekshin gone wild and shouted at Cheong Myung. He shouted, What the hell have you done? You idiot. How do you plan to deal with the consequences? I'm sure they will come running to beat your ass. Just return it you bastard. But Cheong Myung assured them that it was okay since the Wudang sect didn't know him because he was wearing a mask, but it was obvious that he was Cheong Myung while fighting. Bekshin told him, But you were fighting using your sword. Oh my god. I'd rather go to hell quickly than go through this. This bastard stole the Wudang sect out of all the places. Cheong Myung raised the map and said, Senior, are you telling us to just back off, senior? And tell me to just take this map back to the Wudang sect. So do I just return it? The map of the immortal medicine master's tomb. And leave the divine pills? Bekshin knows that this is evil. But how can he not fall into this trap? It is the divine pill. How can he not fall for it? He wants to take it at all costs. With full determination, Cheong Myung said, you will gain nothing if you avoid risks in your life. Sometimes you have to ignore the consequences. You have to take the risk. Don't think about anything. You have to gamble everything you got. Bekshin told him that if they failed to do it, they would lose everything and even the Mount Hua would go bankrupt. 
All of them realize that it is true, which makes them all silent. Cheung Myung clenched his fist and shouted at them, You have to bet everything if you want to win. Jo Jiel said that made even Baekshin shocked. For the first time, I will agree with Cheung Myung. We don't have time to think about it. The Wudang sect disciples would run to their sect, and if they come with the reinforcements, it would be over. We will get it even if we die. Yoon Young even agrees with what they are saying and tells his senior that they need to do it. Baekshin looks at the eyes of his younger disciples with full of determination. So he asks, so what we have to do is to decipher the map. Won't we encounter traps when we enter it? Cheong Myung said, don't worry about that. I will take care of the rest. Baekshin stands up and told his younger disciples, Sheet, I am a man too. That is much enough. I can neglect the consequences a little. If it is the divine pills, I will find it even if the sect leader blows off my head. He shouted, let's do it. We will crack the code of the map tonight, whatever happens. We won't sleep until we decode this map, and we will find the tomb before the Wudang sect comes. For the divine pill. And then the disciples shouted and cheered. Seeing his senior disciples energy, Cheung Myung smiled because his senior disciples had already grown up well. Sect leader Wee Limson looks at the surrounding and sees that the wall has broken down again. Because of that, he only can take a sigh and he almost want to forget the favor from the help of the Mount Hua. He thinks that when those guys appeared, it seems like his heart is getting more evil. But he suddenly felt a pain in his body. This made him cough again and again. He was thinking that he was getting better from the medicine he was taking. But he knows that it was an injury that won't heal with just a medicine. It is impossible to treat internal injuries. Even though it was painful, he knows that he can't show his weakness now. The Shadow Hua sect was now able to stand on his feet. If he says that he, the leader of the Hua Shadow sect, is unable to lead the sect in such an important time, then it will ruin the affairs of the sect again. And if that happens, he won't forgive himself even if he dies. He goes into his bed thinking that the pain will fade away, and he will go better after resting. He knows that he has a lot more work to do tomorrow. His body needs to endure for the Shadow Hua sect to regain their former glory. Until then, he needs to fight with that sickness. Then Cheung Myung suddenly enters the quarters of the sect leader and slams the door. That made the sect leader be alarmed. Cheung Myung asked the sect leader, you are going to sleep already? The sect leader replied, what is wrong? Is something bothering you? Cheung Myung stays silent and looks at the body of the sect leader to see what is the problem. Cheung Myung told him, I am not the one who has a problem. It was you sect leader. Don't you think so? I already closed the door, so let's get started. The sect leader asks him, what do you mean by saying let's get started? Cheung Myung grabs his shoulder and pushes him on the bed. The sect leader was alarmed and said, Oh my god. Hey, slow down a bit. Cheung Myung told the sect leader to keep quiet and to shut up. The sect leader was still panicking and said, Stop. Please slow down young disciple. What are you doing all of a sudden? But Cheung Myung releases his strong energy and transfer it to the sect leader. Cheung Myung told the sect leader that he has an internal injury that needs to be treated. The sect leader said, are you saying you will treat my internal injuries? It is not as easy as you think. If you miss, you will get permanent injuries on yourself. But Cheung Myung told the sect leader that it is impossible for him to miss, which made the sect leader shock. Cheung Myung knows very well what will happen if he makes a single mistake, and he also knows how to treat internal injuries. There are two ways to treat internal injuries. The first one is to purify their twisted key to flow by themselves. But it requires a lot of skills to be able to do it. But the sect leader doesn't have enough skills to be able to do that. His body is completely destroyed. So there is only one method left. It is by purifying the twisted key with the help of someone else. Although it was much more difficult than the first method. Cheung Myung transfers energy into his body to purify the twisted key. He grabs the sect leader's mouth to keep him silent. But the sect leader is still panicking, asking Cheung Myung what is he doing. The sect leader felt the key that was transferred into his body in his mind. 
I almost opened my mouth. What is with this sudden kindness of transferring the key? I almost interrupted the flow of key and caused permanent internal injuries. The twisted key is starting to purify and the broken and scattered key in his body is starting to get fixed. Cheung Myeong told him, fortunately, it does not appear to be completely damaged. Since this actually works, as he felt the key entering his body, he was in deep thoughts, in his mind. Seriously, the pain I have been experiencing all this time is fading away. This warm key entered my body. Is this the Taoist spirit? Then Cheung Myeong entered his mind and told him, of course, since I am the Mount Hua disciple after all. After hearing that, it made the leader shocked that it made his eyes almost pop out. He is asking in his mind, if Cheung Myeong just talk and exchange conversation while entering his thought. Cheung Myeong just kept holding his mouth and told him to hold on a little more since it will be over soon. As far as sect leader we knows, only the most powerful martial artist can talk during an exchange. He is starting to question, how could he do something that even sect leaders would not be able to dare doing it? Who the hell is this young disciple? Cheung Myeong told the sect leader to stand up, but the sect leader was shocked that his body responded and acted as Cheung Myeong said, his body squatted on its own. Cheung Myeong told the sect leader, we will start with the main flow now. Simply, purifies all the internal veins in the body, including those that are hard to reach. Since the sect leader cannot talk, he is starting to question his mind. What does Cheung Myeong is talking about? Cheung Myeong said, I will lead the key, and you follow it with your energy. Here we are. Then Cheung Myeong transfers a lot of key to the sect leader. The sect leader could only hold his grit as the energy was transferred into his body. Eventually, the energy from all the key veins would gather into the danchen like a stream. The danchen is the best place in the body to spread key. A very sensitive place that your body might perish if you make a slight mistake. But Cheung Myeong is a legend and won't make a single mistake in the process. Basically, this process takes place slowly, but there is no time for that now. Speeding up the process may come with side effects, but if he leaves the body of the sect leader like this, the sect leader will perish quickly. So Cheung Myeong decided to take a little risk in the process. He already passed through the clogged veins as he cleansed his inner injuries. His key is now back to what it was inside his body. But this time, there is more things that Cheung Myeong need to do. It is that the process must be repeated 12 times in order for the body to be completely cured. And then he smacks the abdomen of the sect leader again and again. And that created a large sparks of light in the whole room. While doing curing the sect leader, after those steams goes out from the body of the sect leader, it is a sign that he is now fully cured. The pain that he carries every day, he can no longer feel that pain. Not only did the sect leader gets better, but his body and constitution get even more better. Sect leader is starting to question Cheong Myeong about the things he has done. But before he could finish what he is going to ask, Cheong Myeong told him, you will not be forgotten by the Mount Hua sect. Mount Hua never forgets benevolence. Your loyalty towards the sect over the years would undoubtedly be rewarded by the gate master. Cheong Myeong clenched his fist and pounded his chest as a resolute gesture of determination and told the sect leader, please keep the name of the Mount Hua high as you always have. And in the future, the name of the Mount Hua will rise to heights. Sect leader looked at Cheong Myeong. In his mind, third class disciple, Cheong Myeong. No, the divine dragon. He showed his truth for the long time. It was a dream, the revival of the Hua shadow sect together with Mount Hua. This made the sect leader cry and emotional. He told Cheung Myeong that he would make sure that he would become loyal and rise again with Mount Hua. He said he would definitely do it. Sun rises and Cheung Myeong goes back to his senior disciples and looks at them on their progress. But what he saw is his senior Bekshin with a lot of papers on the ground where he draws the pattern. Bekshin was going crazy trying to understand and he was saying not like that, not like this. It is not supposed to be like this. What the hell did I do wrong? His senior disciple Jojiel was smashing his head on the floor, saying he was a scum, 
because he cannot understand what was written. Yun Yun was also going crazy trying to understand where is the direction of the map, trying to point. Even Yu, Isil, who is the most chill within the groups, is depressed because she could not understand anything. Chiyoung Myung asks his seniors what is the things that they are doing, but Chiyoung Myung could not say anything as he saw the depressing state of his seniors. Chiyoung Myung said, What? You can't solve it? Bekshin replied, I was considered a genius among my peers, and I learned a lot, but it is impossible unless you are a genius among the genius. I couldn't solve it. We must bring it to the top three geniuses of the world to solve it. Chiyoung Myung told Bekshin that the Wudang sect already solved it. Bekshin was sweating and replied, They must have a brilliant genius. That made Chiyoung Myung annoyed and told him, So what are you saying? That the Mount Hua sect can't do what the Wudang did. Bekshin replied, When did I say that? I'm sure someone can solve it. Bekshin told Chiyoung Myung, but our time is short, and we are few. Anyway, this is beyond our ability. We must find someone who has studied all these things in his entire life. Zhou Jiao was sulking and asks, but how will we find someone like that in this deserted place? There is no way to find it in Nanying. Yun Yun asks Chiang Miyong, what do you think? I think it is time to go to the town. Because of that Chiang Miyong got angry and even made Yun Yun sweat. He said, Wudang's dog men will come like dogs soon, so are you saying we will go to town and find some experts? He added, so are you saying that we sit back and watch as the Wudang sect get stronger, huh? Bekshin told him to calm down since it was impossible to decode it. With a scary expression, Chiang Miyong looked at them and said, what is the solution? You don't know? There is always a solution for every problem. Seeing that expression, they are sweating, and seems to be scared they starts to ask. What is wrong with that expression? What kind of trouble will this bastard do again? Since they can't solve the code behind the map, Yun Yun gives it back to Chiang Miyong. Chiang Miyong asks, is this real? Yun Yun replied, yes, I think so. It is difficult, but it has rules to solve it. I would have figured out something out if I had more time. Chiang Miyong said, so it is currently impossible in any case. At least we are sure that this is the real thing. Now that he is sure that this is the real thing, he wants to come up with a solution on how they can go to the sword graveyard. Yun Yun told Chiang Miyong that solving it from the beginning was impossible. Yun Yun asks, we can't deal with the Wudang sect alone, right? So let's give up this time. Hearing that, he told Yun Yun to repeat what he said. Yun Yun said, do you mean let us give up? Chiang Miyong replied, No, before that. Yun Yun replied, Do you mean, we can't deal with the Wudang sect alone? And then an idea popped up in his mind, and he said, Alone, with just a few of us. Yes, exactly. We can't stop them with just a few of us. He asks his seniors, It would be solved if it weren't just us then, right? Which made his senior confused about what does he meant. He told his senior that they would let this turn into a huge thing, which made his senior confused and asks him what does he meant. Chiang Miyong told them, like what you said, we can't stop the Wudang sect with just the people here. In that case, we're better off turning this into a huge thing instead. He happily added, we will tell the world that the sword of the graveyard is somewhere in Nanying. Hearing that made everyone silent, even Yu Isil could not believe that he intended to make this thing bigger. Because of that, Bekshin turns into a beast mode and shouts at him, Are you out of your mind? You went and created a hell of a mess. And now, you want to spread the news of a treasure that is worth millions of golds everywhere? Are you seriously crazy? Yun Yun raised his hand to make his senior calm down, and he said, Wait a minute, that does sound crazy. But if you think about it, he is not totally wrong though. Think about this again. If the Wudang sect, who is desperate to find the sword graveyard, sends reinforcements from the main sect, then the numbers of the people sent will be tremendous. In that case, we won't be able to stop them with just the five of us. If that many of the Wudang disciples attack at once, then we will have no chance even with Chiang Miyong at our side. He put of the dirt and stone as an illustration, and he said, however, 
What if the various sects from all over the world start gathering here? Zhou Jiel realized what Yun Yun meant and he shouted. We are intentionally creating a chaotic situation. Yun Yun told them, this is still just an idea, but at least we will have a bit of chance that way. We won't be able to sneak past the Wudang sect if they send more people here, but if multiple sects are involved and the situation becomes chaotic, then we might get a chance to squeeze ourselves in there during the mayhem. And we have someone among us who will go on a rampage when there is a mess, right? Bekshin realized that Yun Yun is referring to the crazy bastard Chiang Miyong who will go rampage if he sees what he wants. Because of that, Bekshin could only take a sigh and said, Although, I feel like I am about to be driven crazy, that doesn't sound completely illogical. Alright, it is all for nothing. He asks Chiang Miyong. So, what rumors will be spreading? Do we just go out there and tell people that the sword graveyard is in Naining? Chiang Miyong smirked and replied. As if someone would believe something like that. Because of that, Bekshin asks him, Do you have any better ideas then? We are running out of time. Chiang Miyong replied, No matter how much we try to spread the rumors, no one will believe them. They need to be spread by a trustworthy person. Bekshin asks, Who would that be? Chiang Miyong replied, It is not about who, it is about where. Just rest up, I will be back soon. In the Wudang sect, the Wudang sect leader sage, Hio Du asks Jin Haiyan, and what he says that Mu Jin was defeated and suffered heavy injuries, is true. Jin Haiyan told him that it was all true. Sage Hio Du said, So the rumors about the Mount Hood Divine Dragon were true, huh? Well, it is not surprising that a third-class disciple who is able to defeat ten second-class disciples of the Southern Edge sect is capable of that. Besides that was two years ago, wasn't it? The Wudang sect leader asks, Jin Haiyan, do you know why such a thing happened? Jin Haiyan replied, it was because I was foolish. The leader told him, no, it was not that. The reason why this happened is because of the traits of the techniques that the Wudang sect have. All martial arts become stronger the longer you train it. However, the Wudang sect's techniques growth cannot be compared to the other sects. The more internal energy one has, the deeper their understanding with the heart is. And the longer they train with their sword, the more their power will increase. I can tell you that if you had learned another sect's martial arts instead, you wouldn't have been defeated by that Mount Hood Divine Dragon Kid. Jin Haiyan, do you understand what I am saying? Jin Haiyan remained silent, in his mind. What kind of answer is he expecting from me? If I agree with his words, then I will be insulting the Wudang sect's martial arts, but if I say that he was wrong, then I will be offending him. Jin Haiyan decided to tell the leader that he was not sure what to answer. The leader said, I just told you the reason. The reason why we need the medicine immortals method of making the pill. Jin Haiyan realized what the leader was pointing out about how to increase their internal energy to improve their sex, so he asked for an apology because he did not realize faster. The sect leader said, it was not your fault, I have made the wrong judgment. I did expect the Mount Hua divine dragon to be there, but I didn't think that he would be strong enough to defeat Mu Jin. In fact, I thought that you would be enough to deal with him. Jin Haiyan apologized because he was not able to meet the expectations of their leader. The sect leader asks, So, what do you think of the Mount Hua Divine Dragon after seeing him in person? Jin Haiyan replied, He is a monster. We did have a trouble dealing with the other Mount Hua sect's disciples too, but he was on a completely different level. The sect leader was in deep thought. From what he heard in Jin Haiyan, in his mind, is he that strong? Jin Haiyan was even more talented than Mu Jin at his age. For someone like him to feel that the Mount Hood Divine Dragon is a tall wall to overcome, this is the problem that is hard to overlook. After all, that might mean that the position of the Wudang sect's future generation is in danger. The leader asks him, can you go there again? Jin Haiyan replied, me, do I still deserve that chance? The sect leader told him, yes, you did commit a mistake which is why I ought to give you a chance to make up for it. Those who are departing for Nanying have almost completed their preparations. Hearing that, Jin Haiyan realized that the Wudang sect was going to make a move. The sect leader told him, 
The elders will be going there personally this time around. As soon as you are prepared, I want you to go to Nanying again and get what we need from the sword graveyard. The Mount Hua Divine Dragon Kid must be stomping his feet in frustration right now because he is unable to decipher the map. So he is probably waiting for us to arrive in order to find an opportunity to sneak in and steal the method of making the pill. If my guess is right, that place must be built in a way that makes it impossible for people to know what happens inside. The sect leader said, I trust you know what I am talking about. I want you to fix your own mistakes. Jin Haiyan clenched his fist and told the sect leader, this time, I will make sure to execute your orders. In Lu Yang, there is a beggar who is begging for money to the citizens who are passing by. There are citizens that is talking about the big event that happened yesterday. They talked about the disciple of the Mount Hua sect that fought against the Wudang sect's disciple and won. Although some citizen would not believe in it and thinks that it was all a lie or they must heard it wrongly. After hearing that rumor, the beggar left and ran towards their local branch leader. That beggar whispered it to the local leader and that leader wrote something to be delivered to another beggar that had a much higher position. The local branch leader was able to receive it, and he read what was written on the letter. He said, what did he just say in the letter? The Wudang sect lost to Mount Hua in Nanying? What a ridiculous rumor. He needs a beating later on. He crumpled the letter that was sent and shouted, they dare send unchecked information, huh? Are they looking down on the Lu Yang branch? He throws that letter and said, well, I am indeed less strict in the beggars these days though. I will summon them shortly and beat the sense out of them. There hasn't been any decent information lately. He looks at the report from Nanying, and the piled report tells that in Nanying, the Mount Hua sect's second class disciples fought on behalf of the Hua Shadow sects against the Wudang sect's second class disciples, who acted on behalf of the Path Academy. The Mount Hua sect won, and the Path Academy left in Nanying. All the remaining reports tell that Mount Hua ends up the victor. In the Luyang beggar branch leader's mind, the Mount Hua sect has already beaten the Southern Edge sect, and now, they all defeated the Wudang sect. A single win could just be luck, then it wouldn't have happened again. Could this mean the revival of the Mount Hua sect? There are 10 most reputable sects in the Murim that are known as the 10 Great Sects. The Mount Hua sect used to be among the ranks, but it became so weak that they have lost their position. If a sect that had been forgotten for a long time suddenly regains their strength and returns to the world, then it will definitely change a lot of things around. This is a huge event that could tilt the power balance in Jianghu. Besides, the first class disciple of the Wudang sect, Azure Dragon Swordsman, Mu Jin, he was seen being carried away in a cart in an unconscious state. This is an utterly ridiculous report that I am seeing right now. It seems there is a need for me to look further into this. Outside the branch, there is a commotion and someone is shouting to stop the guy from entering. This made the leader question, why is it so noisy outside? But it was Cheung Myung who broke down the door by just opening it. Cheung Myung asks him if he is the branch leader of the Luyang branch, which the Luyang branch leader said yes, he is. Then he weaved his hand off, which made the two other beggars fall. Cheung Myung pull of the map he was hiding and told the branch leader that they need to work on something. The branch leader looks at Cheung Myung and, in his mind, why is he drinking a tea like that? It is as if he was drinking a liquor or something. He isn't a picky person, huh? Not only is the cup severely chipped, but the tea tastes almost like water because it was made from cheap leaves. Anyone would be offended with this kind of treatment, but he doesn't seem to be bothered at all. The branch leader starts the conversation and said, I know you are the Mount Hua Divine Dragon, Cheong Myung. So, what did you want to talk about? Cheong Myung replied, I want to sell you something. The branch leader asks, sell something? In a beggar's den? While breaking the door like that, Cheong Myung replied, they insisted on stopping me even though I wanted to meet you, so I couldn't help that. The name of the beggar's sect Luyang branch leader is Hong Degwang, and he said, Sir, it seems like you have a little experience in the Jianghu. The place you are in right now is the office of the beggar's sect's branch leader. I am not sure who you think we are, but the beggar sect isn't a group that you sell things to. If you have something you want to sell, go to a black market shop. 
Cheung Myung stands up and picks up the map and he said, Okay then, if that is what you want. I came here first because we are both from the orthodox factions, but I guess the beggar sect isn't the same as it used to be. First, your guy stopped me at the gate, then the branch leader asked me to go to the black market instead. The branch leader was confused about how did he knew the beggar sect in the past. Cheung Myung hides the map in his clothes and said, Well, what should I do? This is really rare, so I can't just sell it on the market. Where is the nearest branch of the Hao clan from here? The branch leader looks at him, and in his mind, after getting rejected by the beggar's sect, the next place he looks for is the Hao clan. That means he knows what kind of business we do though. He doesn't seem to be worried about just leaving. That means that the thing that he is holding can be sold easily anywhere else. The branch leader thinks that it is best for him to ask for the thing that he is trying to sell first, rather than letting him leave the area. So he asks Cheung Myung what is he trying to sell. Cheung Myung replied, Pardon? Why would it tell someone who is not going to buy it anyway? With no other choice, the branch leader told one of the beggars to hurry and pick up some good liquor right now for their negotiation. Cheung Myung shows him the map which made the branch leader shocked. In his mind, Whoa, a cryptograph. Just by a single look, I already know that this is an important map. I have handled some similar items as a branch leader before, but the vibe this is giving is on a totally different level. While trembling looking at the map, he tried to put his hand on it. But after he put his hands on the map, it was swatted by Cheung Myung instantly. Cheung Myung said, did I say you can touch it? You shouldn't have done that. Because of that hit the branch leader is starting to question his mind. What? How did he hit me? I didn't see any movement. I didn't feel any air fluctuations either. I have heard a lot about the Mount Hua Divine Dragon. But is he that skilled? But he just didn't mind more that attack. And asks more about the item that this drunken guy brought. While being drunk Cheong Myung was thinking about where should he start explaining. Then he explains all the details about how he got the map and what it is, which even made the other beggars who were eavesdropping outside shocked. Cheung Myung said, I have seen tons of such reactions already, so let's skip this part. Everyone wants to know if it is real or not. Your job is to identify such things, right? Cheung Myung looks at the branch leader and asks, how much do you want to buy it for? Looking at the map, the branch leader was thinking deeply that he was lost in his thoughts. In his mind, how much? If what he said is all true, and he really stole this from Wudang sect after beating up Mu Jin. If this indeed is a map that leads to the real sword graveyard, I cannot put a good price on it. Money aside, why the hell is he trying to sell this? No matter what lies in the place the map leads to, isn't it just obvious that even just one item from there would be incredible enough to change one's life in Jianghu? While drinking Cheung Myung said, are you not going to buy it? Are you thinking why aren't I trying to solve this myself? If I could, I would have done it. But if I can't solve it, then what is the point of keeping it? I should at least get some money out of it. In the branch leader's mind, he is right. Even if it leads to a treasure, it is pointless to keep it for life without doing anything. However, we are talking about the pill-making method of the medicine immortal. While that would be a wise decision for a normal person who doesn't care about such stuff, that way of thinking is way too business-like for a Taoist. Taoists would always comply with the direction, values, and rules that their sect have set and with the values of the world. That means that they only live while doing things that are respectable. However, this bastard is doing something that a Taoist wouldn't do. Based on my experience, when such people gain power, they mess up the world however they like. Either he is someone more dangerous than I thought, or he is someone who will bring the revival of the Mount Hua sect. Cheung Myung interfered with his thoughts and said, Hey, what are you thinking so deeply about? I asked you, how much are you going to pay me for this? Looking at Cheung Myung, the branch manager thought that Cheung Myung was quick thinker, but doesn't have much experience in the real world so he said, if this map is truly the map for the sword graveyard, then it is priceless. However, there are a lot of things that we have to consider as well. Even though it is a map that might lead to the sword graveyard, if people find out that it belonged to the Wudang sect, then the number of the potential buyers will be greatly reduced. 
Besides, no one knows if they can solve this map, either. On top of that, we will need to pay a fee to keep people silent about this fact that the beggar sect bought this map. We will also need to secretly look for a buyer, but most importantly, there is no evidence that this is real. So my offer is 100,000 nyang, and on top of that, I will add 20,000 nyang to strengthen our friendship. He told Cheung Myeong that he will pay him a total of 120,000 nyang. Cheung Myeong was starting to wonder while saying the price of 120,000 nyang. He looks at Cheung Myeong, and he thinks that Cheung Myeong was baited by his offer. To strengthen the negotiation, he adds another statement. I am giving you an especially good offer. If you went to somewhere else, you wouldn't be able to get even 10,000 yen. But Cheung Myeong stands up and picks up the map, which makes the branch leader confused. He said, where did you say the branch of the Hao clan was? I will be going since the price doesn't seem to fit what I have in mind. The branch leader said, sir, what are you talking about? The price isn't right? Cheung Myeong takes a sigh and replied, Seriously, 120,000 nyang. The branch leader said, Please don't do anything rash. If you really don't agree with that much, we'll just take further loses. I will offer you 150,000 nyang. It is really rare for us to give someone this much money. It is only because you are the Mount Hua Divine Dragon. Because of that, it made Cheung Myeong angry which made his eyes red and his veins almost burst out from it. He said, only 150,000 nyang. You guys are hopeless. Then the beggar sex Lu Yang branch main office exploded from the kick of Cheong Myeong. The branch leader could only fall on his knees from the shock of the sudden kick of Cheong Myeong. The wall was broken and Cheong Myeong shouted, how dare you try to scam me, you faking beggars. Because of what happened, the branch leader was sweating, and offered 200,000 nyang at Cheong Myeong. This crazy, drunken bastard's eyes turned red from anger, and he said, You are still out of your mind, huh? For the last time, the branch leader offered 300,000 nyang, and told Cheong Myeong that is the last offer he can make. But this bastard Cheong Myeong is not your normal Taoist martial artist. But this crazy, Drunken bastard is the god of negotiations. He smirked and said, 3 million. Don't even dream about it anything less than 3 million nyang. Hearing the 3 million nyang price made the branch leader so shocked that his eyes almost popped out. He told Cheung Myeong, Sir, do you know just how large that sum is? We don't have that much money in the Luyang branch right now. Even if we gathered up everything we could right now, it will be only added up to a million yen. If we were to take money from the main sect, then it would be at least taking half a month. Cheung Myeong didn't care and just looked at him. He asks, so, do you want to make a deal or not? Since he insists, the offer of the branch leader is two million yen, and he asks Cheung Myeong if he agrees to that. He said, that is still a ridiculously huge amount. I doubt that a handful of people have such a sum at their disposal. I will give you 2 million yam, but please accept 1 million first, and come back for a month for the remaining 1 million. But Cheung Myeong told him that he needed 3 million right now, or otherwise, he will not sell it. He was sweating, looking at Cheung Myeong. In his mind, why does he keep pushing it? I can't tell if he knows its true value, or if he is just trying his luck. In any case, I can't deny that he is darn smart for a Taoist. Because my estimation for that map value is 3 million yen. The confidence he has, that annoying expression and posture. It is like he is telling me with his whole body, that he will run to the Hao clan immediately if we don't agree to his conditions. The branch leader said, Sir, we don't have that amount of money that you are requesting in the Lu Yang branch right now. I can't make the deal unless you accept the conditions I have offered. Cheung Myeong replied, All right, as expected, you beggars cannot afford it. However, there are still ways to get money. There is a continental finance manor in Lu Yang, right? The branch leader asks him, why is he asking about that? He said, if you go over there and say that you need money urgently under the name of the beggar sect, they will give you the needed sum right away. Make sure to bring the banknote paper here. The branch leader was shocked and replied, are you asking us to take a loan? A 3 million yang loan, that is the fastest way to ruin one's life. 
Cheung Myung just smirked at him and told him that, as if there is something worse than being a beggar. The branch leader told Cheung Myung that only 2 million nyang is he can offer, and he can't give any more than that. And he was also sure that if Cheung Myung went to the Hao clan, it would be hard for them to offer even for a million nyang. Cheung Myung stands up and told him that there is no other choice but to leave. The branch leader wants to make sure that this bastard Cheung Myung won't win in the negotiation. He said, even if you go to the Hao clan, you will hear the same things again. But if you don't believe me, feel free to try it yourself. Cheung Myung told him that he would not be going to the Hao clan, but instead, he would go into the Wuhan branch. Hearing that Cheung Myung plans to go to the Wuhan branch of the beggar sect made the branch leader angry, and he shouted, you made the effort to come here, didn't you? You should try and settle it here then. Cheung Myung replied, I came here first only because the Wuhan branch is further away. Besides, didn't you say that the Luyang branch doesn't have money? Is there a reason why you don't want me to go there? In his mind, that is because the Nine Finger Beggar is the one who is managing that branch. If I fail to make a deal by sending him away and let another branch take such a huge credit, then the Lu Yang branch will definitely fall out of the favors from the elders. Because of that, the branch leader told Cheung Myung that their branch would buy the map for 3 million yen. Cheung Myung just looks at him with an emotionless expression. His face turned into evil with a smirking smile. He said, you say it is three million nyang. It is three and a half million, isn't it? The branch leader was shocked and said, What? You just said three million. Cheung Myung said, The market price of an item can change in an instant. So, it just increases into three and a half million. Then he smirked again and said, Oh my, I think the price is about to go up again. It is not 3.8 million. I think it is going up to four. Before it could increase more, with all of his might, that branch leader shouted, I will buy it, I will buy it, I will buy it for 3.8 million yen. Then after that, the whole area turned silent. Cheung Myung clapped and cheerfully smiled and told the branch leader that he made the wise decision. This bastard can even make a beggar who has nothing to become poorer. Money piled up and the branch leader said, here is the 1 million that we had and the 2 million that we borrowed from the Continental Finance Manor. A total of 3.8 million of banknote papers like you asked. Cheung Myung, this greedy bastard is just smelling the money like he was not a Taoist. The branch sect leader told Cheung Myung that they made a good deal. He said, just remember one thing, beggar's eyes are everywhere. If this is fake or if you are pulling some trick, then you will definitely pay the price for it. Cheung Myung told him that it was definitely real. The branch leader asks, definitely real. Is there a reason why are you sure? Cheung Myung told the branch leader that he was so sure about it. Hearing that made the branch leader smile, because if he is that confident, and if it is the real thing, then it will be worth four times than the amount they paid. He asks Cheung Myung, May I know why you are that confident? While counting the money, Cheung Myung replied, That map has already been resolved by the Wudang sect. The branch leader happily replied, Oh, the Wudang sect did that? This is indeed real then. Then the whole area turned silent as the thought that it was already solved and he was scammed sink in. Cheung Myung hurriedly ran while carrying the bag of money, and he said, you probably need to hurry up though. They probably left for the graveyard right now. I didn't lie to you. The other beggar was confused. So he asked the branch leader, do we just let him leave like that? I think he just said something bad. But the branch leader was so shocked that his mouth started to widen. He shouted and ordered the other beggars to hurry and catch that bastard. But Cheung Myung was already jumping and was able to left in an instant. In the Mount Hua sect, the finance manager, Hai and Young, said that the disciples who left are heartless because they didn't even send a letter. The sect leader replied, It is not that they went there to play. They have a mission. I'm sure they must have been busy. Hai and Young replied, Even though you say that, you are still coming up here 15 times a day to look at the road to Nanying. Hai and Sang said, Don't worry sect leader, I'm sure they are doing great. Hai and Young replied, Wow. What a great man you are. Are you not worried at all about them having to deal with the Wudang sect? 
How could you say such carefree things? Hai and Sang replied. They are different from us, aren't they? They aren't lagging in any aspect. That is why I'm saying that they will be fine. Hai and Young said. They need to be different. They mustn't be like us. We can't let them go through all the things we have gone through. Hearing that word from Hai and Young, the sect leaders remember something. The things we have been gone through. The phrase that carries the pain that we, the previous generation, experienced. We watched the Mount Hua sect fall with our own eyes. All the people we trusted to help us turn their back on us, heartlessly. It was painful to see countless of our fellow disciples, that we were like our family, leave. As we grow up in those chaotic times, we weren't even able to train our martial arts properly. Which is why they, who haven't gone through the pain of witnessing the Mount Hua sect fall, have to be different from us. That is what Hai and Young is saying. The sect leader told the other elders, those children ought to be the new Mount Hua sect. We will just be fertilizer to help them grow. That is at least what we can do. Then Yunem hurriedly delivers the message to the elders, and he said, the Yuna Merchant Guild just sent the news of Nanying to us. The sect leader was shocked that the young master of Yuna Merchant Guild delivered it. In the letter, the Mount Hua sect's disciples and the Wudang sect disciples had a fight on behalf of the Hua Shadow sect and the Path Academy respectively. The Mount Hua sect was victorious. Thus, the Hua Shadow sect will remain in Nanying and the Path Academy will have to leave. The Hua Shadow sect also told us to pass the message to you that they will start accepting disciples again after things settle down. After reading the letter, the sect leader asks if this is real. Yunam replied, the Yuna Merchant Guild's young master confirmed the authenticity of this a few times. The elders were happy, including the sect leader, because those children were able to win against the strongest sword sect. He only says his wish that they will keep growing up this way. So one day, the Mount Hua sect may become one of the ten great sects again. The sect leader asks Yunam if they are going back right now. Yunam told him that they didn't have an idea since the disciples didn't send the message, but they should be on their way back because they don't have any more business. Because of that, the sect leader concluded that they should be back in three days. Then the elders hurriedly go back to their hall to prepare a welcoming party for the young disciples. Because they did a good job, the sect leader look at the road to Nanying and wants to say those guys really did a great job. Hai and Young said, It was amazing that Cheong Myung didn't get into trouble. Sect leader replied, He is a Taoist too, after all. Just because he doesn't act like one within the sect, it doesn't mean he does the same outside. And the other elders agreed with what the sect leader said and laughed together. But these poor elders don't know what kind of other trouble the bastard Cheong Myung created. On the other hand, the branch leader was going crazy that the whole area was alarmed by his actions. He shouted, Mount Hua Divine Dragon, my money. The branch leader was so angry and was panting down from shouting. He said, Mount Hua Divine Dragon, you looked down on us and made a fool out of us. I will teach you that messing the beggar sect. No, that messing with me it is something you will regret. The beggars followed the order of the branch leader to call for reinforcement in the main sect. However, they said that they don't have a lot of manpower available to send over. Beggar sect's branch leader told him, go find an expert draftsman and get them to duplicate the map. Ask the other sects that could be interested in buying the sword graveyard's map and tell them that we will sell it to them in a cheap price. The other beggar asks the specifics of the sects that they will going to sell the map. The branch leader said, no specifics, we passed that already. Ask all of them, starting the ones that are closer to us and those that are more famous, and find out where the divine dragon of Mount Hu went. There is no room for failure here. After spreading the news and selling the map, the martial artist swarmed all over Nanying. Although some hesitate to believe in it, but most martial artists said that it is different this time because the one who spread the information is no other than the beggar sect. Well-known martial artists also rush in the place, including the demon of Jiangxi, Five Poison Hand, and the one with the red clothes known as the Red Slaughterer. The Mighty Axe is also in the place. It feels like the war is about to break out. While looking at the top of the roof, the Wudang sect elder sees the Stone Sword sect, the Pine sect, and other sects. 
It looks like the group that made their name in their region gathered in the area. The Wudang sect's elder name is Hyo San. He asked Jin Haiyan, it has been only three days since the map got stolen. Does it make sense that so many people are already gathered in Nanying? How would they know the contents of it? Jin Haiyan replied, those Mount Hua sect bastards must have leaked that the sword graveyard is somewhere in Nanying. While looking at the surrounding, the elders take a guess about the situation. His guess is that the Mount Hua sect disciples cannot solve the sword graveyard map themselves. So their plan is to prevent the Wudang sect from hoarding all the goods alone. In his mind, if they can't have it, they don't want anyone to have it, huh? Well, well, what an evil attitude. Jin Haiyan asks, Elder, what should we do? Kyo San replied, nothing's changed. The fact that they are all still here means that no one solved the map yet. While our plan to stay out of sight from the public after the theft, our map has been ruined. It won't matter at all once we get the sword graveyard first. They have already noticed our presence here. They are just feigning ignorance and waiting for us to take our move. He added, once we take action, they will do whatever it takes to track us down and find out the location of the sword graveyard to stop us from getting it ourselves. However, we are the Wudang sect. We are capable of dealing with each and every one of them. No one in this world can stop us from going where we want to go. Get ready. We will be departing for the sword graveyard soon. Everyone is about to find out that the Wudang sect was just trying to stay out of trouble. And we are not hiding out of fear. We shall be the ones to acquire the origin energy pill. Bekshin told them that the one who is with him is the beggar sect's Luyang branch leader, which made Yun Yung shocked. Yun Yung asks, why would he come to Nanying? And why was he looking for Cheung Myung? Bekshin replied, I am not sure. He must have gotten into some trouble again. He added, though what I am certain about is that those eyes aren't showing any friendliness towards Cheung Myung. The branch leader said, there are now more martial artists than citizen of Nanying in this place. Are you satisfied that things have gone according to your plan? Cheung Myung replied, you came to look for me just to say all sorts of strange things. Aren't you the one who spread the information that the sword graveyard is in Nanying? You were probably scared that the Wudang sect would take everything by themselves. Although he was so annoyed by what Cheung Myung said, he tries to calm down and asks, So, what is your plan now? Let us hear it. Cheung Myung replied, What can I do? I will be just enjoying the show. I have so much money now. There is no rush for me. Hearing that, the branch leader was so irritated that he wants to beat the sheet out of him. But he remembers the time where Cheung Myung kicked their office. And with just one kick, it exploded and the wall broke down. So, his only choice is to hold back right now. In his mind, to sum up this situation, it took me only one day to track him here after he took my money and ran away. But that's it. There is nothing I can do in this situation. It will take at least few days until main reinforcements arrive. And the Wudang sect will probably at the graveyard by then. Even if the reinforcements arrive, we are still short in manpower given the short notice to gather them. With those numbers, we won't be able to take on everyone who is gathered here, not to mention the Wudang sect. So, if we want to get the sword graveyard, our only real chance is to depend on this extremely skilled bastard. I feel as if the sky is falling down on me. However, there is still something I can bet on. While he is not exactly the most sane person, there is a reason why he is confident. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done such things. I am certain he has something up his sleeve among his crazy insanity of his. That is the last hope that I can bet on. So, I must hold back myself, even though the sight of this bastard annoys me. He told Cheung Myung that they should move already, but Cheung Myung just offered him a liquor and a beef jerky. The branch leader said, this isn't the time for that. Numerous groups of martial artists have already gathered outside. Do you feel nothing after seeing that? Cheung Myung replied, everyone's so greedy seriously what is the deal of the sword graveyard i can't understand the fools who would spend so much effort and money just for that he was hit by those words by cheong miyong that made him so angry he turns into a dragon and his voice is heard all over the area that made even by the other disciples shocked he said you bastard 
You need to get the origin pill, don't you? If you keep acting like this, the others will be the only ones who will get something out of this. But Chiang Miyong was just chilling while listening to his whining. He shouted again, take a look outside. Everyone is already moving busily. What the hell are you thinking? Then suddenly, Yu Isil appeared. That even made the branch leader shock. She told Chiang Miyong that the Wudang sect is here. Hearing that, Chiang Miyong started to stand up and throw the glass of liquor. He told his group to be prepared and ready, then runs towards the location. The branch leader also hurriedly orders other beggars to follow Chiang Miyong and his group. In his mind, they must stick with the Mount Hua disciples at all costs. So he hurriedly ran to also follow them. Wee Sahing asks his father what is happening, but he also doesn't know the answer. He could only trust Chiang Miyong if he had a plan, because it really smelled like trouble was going to come. When Wudang Sek started to move, the other martial artists started to follow them. In the elder's mind, it only means one thing, that those people who wouldn't normally dare to get on the Wudang Sek's nerves has no regard anymore to what the Wudang Sek thinks this time around. The elder told Mu Yian, one of the first class disciples, to take on the rear, which the disciple follows. He tried to stop in the middle of running and told his other comrades to be prepared, because they were going to stop the approaching martial artist. When the martial artist and the disciples of Wudang clash, a huge explosion above the area was created. The elder knows that it is pointless now to use words with people who are blinded by greed. Their plan is to lessen the victim by using force, instead. He asks one of the disciples if how far is the area that they need to go. The disciple told him that based on the interpretation, should be around the area. After reaching the area, he starts to question his mind. Is this it? A barren land right outside the large forest? This is definitely suspicious. If we ran across this place without knowing anything, we would have ignored it while thinking it was a little strange. However, the sword graveyard is definitely here. He ordered the disciples to search all over the area. The disciples follow and thrust their swords on the ground. The elder Hyo San was certain that this must be the sword graveyard. Then one of the disciples shouted that he noticed that there was something on the ground that he had dug into. Hearing that, the elder hurriedly unsheathed his sword and thrust his sword into that area. He smiled because he knows that there is something beneath it. He ordered the other disciples to get away from that area. Then he infused the energy in his sword. That made the ground to shake him. Then he pulls of his sword from the ground. That made the ground to collapse. And a huge gate suddenly appeared on the ground. On the other hand, one of the martial artists was shouting while parrying the attack of the Wudang disciples. He said, get lost, you Wudang bastards. Do you think we don't know what you are hiding away from us? Push them back. After he seen the gate, he shouted, There is something over there. Those Wudang guys are opening up something. We found it. This is it. The entrance to the sword graveyard is revealed. Charge everyone. After hearing that all of the martial artists had gone wild and crazy going into the entrance, the Wudang disciple wants to stop them at all cost, but the other martial artists from the different region don't care about it and wants to jump into the gate. A lot of martial artists jumps towards the elder to stop him from entering. As soon as he felt that the martial artists were nearing, he called Hyo One, one of the elders, to stop them. Hyo One appeared and spin his body using his sword, which was able to parry down all of the attacks of the martial artist who approached Hyo San. After that, he sliced all of them instantly. Hyo San said, They are pushing us back more than I had expected. We can no longer take our time to search the place. Once we get our hands on the origin energy pill, we will retreat immediately. In the meantime, want you to work with Mu Yian to buy me some time. Hyo One told his senior brother that he would not let any single person pass on him. Even there are lots of disciples work together, they can't still open the gate. So, the elder wanted to take action and told everyone to step aside. Even when the elder uses sword aura, it still cannot scratch the iron. So he used more powerful skill which is the enhanced aura and slashed down the gate. After slicing it down, the door started to crumble down. The elder noticed something beneath the door, so he backed down hurriedly. Looking at how deep the hole is, 
The elder realized that they would have fallen down if they would have rushed in without thinking. In his mind, I wonder why the sword graveyard is deep within the mountain. It seems we have to jump into the seemingly bottomless pit in order to reach it. To obtain the energy pill, we are supposed to go down into this pitch darkness. Huh? How wicked. But we can't return back after reaching this far. And the rest of us won't be able to hold off other groups infinitely. The elder told Heo One, I will lead the front. Bring Mu Yian and the rest of the disciples and guard their rear. Heo One replied, Yes, senior brother. I will bring them and follow you after that. Hio San told the other disciples to follow him to go down. He knows that there is no way to know what is below. However, even the darkness that swallows the light won't be able to stop them. Because for him, the origin pill is already belongs to them. On the surface, one of the Wudang sect disciples, Mu Yian was being pushed through. It was actually the martial artist, Mak Ho, who was pushing him. He said, Wudang bastards, you are way too greedy. How dare you lay your hands on my property? It belongs to me, Mac Ho, the mighty axe. Mac Ho told the disciple that he would cut him in half and then jump at him, aiming to attack him with the axe. The disciples think that was already his end, but luckily, Hio One was able to arrive and block that attack. Hio One said, You are just like a wild boar. Hey, Musclehead, is that all you got? Mac Ho replied, Get lost, old geezer. If you stand in my way, I will mess you up real good. Hio One told him, Looks like you need to cool off your head a little. Let me help you with that. On the other hand, the five poison hand was laughing and he said, Fools. In a situation like this, the one who comes later is the one who takes everything. By the time we arrived, the fight should be over already. We will just take the remaining few who barely have a strength to stand up. But at his back, he notices something that arrives later than them. It was a group who were debating with one another. It was the group of Cheung Myong, and he told them get out of the way. Then Cheung Myong punched the five poison hand together with his comrades, who went flying. On the other hand, in the depthness of the hole, Hyo San was able to reach the bottom, and for him, they have already found the sword graveyard. From slashing down the pile of soil, they were able to find another gate. The battle of Mac Ho and Hio One continues on the ground, and from just one attack of Mac Ho, the whole three was cut off easily, but Hio One was able to evade it. When he jumps to attack Hio One, Hio One was able to block that attack using sword energy. The attack of the mighty axe was parried down, and he was thrown off, which made him lose his balance. Then Hio One appeared on his back suddenly. Mac Ho told him that those attack won't work on him. But Hio One was able to kick his face from that blind spot. The mighty axe was thrown off, and the whole area exploded from just one kick. It was a very strong impact. The other martial artist was alarmed, seeing how strong the elder of the Wudang sect. Hio One called Mu Yian and said, Gather the remaining disciples and head to the sword graveyard. I will protect the rear. The remaining disciples runs toward the hole, and Hio One said, Everyone, listen up. The Wudang sect has taken over this place. If you go after them or try to enter the sword graveyard, you will have to face the sword of the Wudang sect. Will anyone dare to do that? As they saw the aura, the other martial artists were so wary of him because he was able to take down the might axe in one blow. Then the red slaughterer appeared in the area and said, Old man you sure are talking nonsense. Are you guys the owner of the sword graveyard? He added, the sword graveyard belongs to the Woundless Interceptor, not to the Wudang sect. I can't believe you are claiming to be its owner just because you discovered it first. You will be the joke of the world. Then someone was laughing, enters the conversation, and he said, Red Slaughterer is actually right this time. What an honor to meet the renowned sage Heo one of the Wudang sect. The one who is speaking is named as Gok Bu, known as the Heavenly Sword. After seeing these two legends, Hio One was thinking something in his mind. Even the Heavenly Sword is here. They are the people that I would have a hard time fighting. How did these famed martial artists gather here in such a short time? Gok Bu said, While I don't want to agree with the Red Slaughterer, it is just unbefitting for the Wudang sect to threaten others just because you were here first. Hio One asks, Are you saying you will make the Wudang sect your enemy? Gok Bu replied, 
I am just saying that everyone should have an equal opportunity. While the Wudang sect might have discovered it, every single person here has the right to enter the sword graveyard. Everyone, don't you agree? One of the martial artists said, he is right. Who would have thought that the Wudang sect would be this greedy? Another one shouted that they must drive the greedy Wudang sect first, which others also agreed. Heo One could only stay silent while listening to their protests. Heo One released his strong aura and said, Don't say, I didn't warn you guys. Those who try to enter the sword graveyard will have to face the sword of the Wudang sect. Gak Bu pulled off his great sword and said, Well, that does sound scary. However, if fear was all we had, we wouldn't have come all the way here. Heo One looks at the back and there is only one remaining disciple left until they all enters the sword graveyard. After Mu Yian and the other disciples jump back, he embeds his sword with aura, and then sliced the ground to create a smoke and hid himself. After that, he jumps towards the hole, heading to the sword graveyard. Then the whole martial artist crowd had gone crazy and shouted, after him, we must not let them take over the sword graveyard. But no one wants the other to go in first and the result is that they fight amongst themselves. Only Gak Bu was able to flew off at them easily. Then these two strong martial artists met in the entrance. Gak Bu asks, are you going to get in my way? The Red Slaughter replied, there is no need for us to waste our strength here. Then both of them jumps down to the sword graveyard. The whole place was in chaos. The sound of swords clashing and the blood that spill are all over the area. Only the word kill was able to be heard in the whole place. Then the legend appeared and asks, How did so many people gather in here? That legend is no other than Cheong Myong. Bekshin told him that he was the one who caused all of this. Cheong Myong replied, How could I know that there would be this many people gather here? Cheong Myong points his sword at them and said, screw them we are going in as well the other disciples also pulled of their swords bekshin said damn it all right everyone brace yourselves any mistake could be fatal then Cheung miyong was doing his sword stance and shouted all of you don't get in my way i warned you then all of them rushed towards that chaos to fight and enter the sword graveyard